Hey what's up guys, Hedrimas here with another class guide. This time I'm going to be covering the assassination rogue. First we're gonna go over the talents, after that we're gonna discuss what gear you want to go for, what kind of assray traits you want on your gear, the opener rotation and then the normal rotation. So first of all we're gonna go over the talents. There's multiple talents you can pick, but I'm going to go over the best talent setup first and then I'm going to give you some info about the other talents, which you can use if you want to, but you know, yeah, we're gonna go over the best talents first. So first of all, in the first row we want to go for elaborate planning. What it does is every time you use a finishing move you get 10% extra damage done for 4 seconds. This is good for single target, but it's also great for AoE. The second talent we're gonna go for is Sutterfuge. Your abilities requiring stealth can be used for 3 seconds after stealth breaks. Also causes Garrow to deal 80% increased damage and have no cooldown when used from stealth and for 3 seconds after breaking stealth. This is a very important one, I'll tell you why later once we go over the Azerite traits, but this one is one that you always have to take. It's also really good for Mythic Plus because Garrow dealing 80% more damage means that on an opener you can Garrow to multiple enemies. The next uh, trait we're gonna go for is Vigor. It increases your maximum energy by 50 and your energy regeneration by 10. This makes it easier to pull your energy once you need to for certain situations and just in general it gives you more energy so you have a bit faster gameplay. After that we have cheat death. This is actually a choice talent. You have leeching poison which can uh, grant you 10% leech. You have cheat death which if, if you die you actually don't die, you get healed to 7% of your maximum health and you take 85% reduced damage, which is really really strong for raids and dungeons. And then you have elusiveness, which uh, re reduces all the damage you take from non-area of effect attacks by 30% for 5 seconds when you use faint. If you don't pick this talent, then your faint just does 40% reduced damage from AoE attacks such as uh, AoE that bosses do and so on and so on, that's really good defensive. The tier 75 talent, you go for Prey of the Week, what it does is when, when you cheap shot or kidney shot, so basically when you stun an enemy, they take 10% more damage from all sources for 6 seconds. These all sources means everyone, so if you have a raid of 20 people and you stun the enemy, everybody does 10% more damage, so this actually means that it is very very good to use, and so when you do have to stun an enemy, you don't lose out on as much raid DPS. The next trait we're gonna go for is Tox- uh, next talent we're gonna go for, rather, is Toxic Blade. What it does is, you deal some damage, you gain a combo point, and all the nature damage you do against the target is increased by 30% for 9 seconds. <clears throat> The last trait we're gonna go for is Poison Bomb. What this does is Envenom and Rupture have a 4% chance per combo point to smash the vial of poison at the target location, creating a pool of acidic death that deals 4300 nature damage over 2 seconds to all enemies within it. This is very strong, mainly because it's passive, you don't have to do anything for it, and also for single target it is the best the best choice by far. Now, now that you know what the base talent setup is, I'm gonna go over the other talents that you can also pick. In the first row you have Master Poisoner, which increases the damage done by your weapon poisons by 30% and all the non-damaging effects by 20%. This is the simplest choice because you don't have to think about it, you just do more damage overall. But it's also kind of good for AoE, let me show you why. So I'm gonna show you why it's actually good in AoE. If you pick Master Poisoner, if you have the talent, let's poison all of these. Hello, can he get poisoned? Oh shit, Poison Bomb triggered. Yeah, let's see. It uh, does 844, 1600, 844. Uh, okay, and now let's use elaborate planning. Okay, it's actually 800. I had a uh, venom active, that's why. Now let's use elaborate planning. And now we do 1200, 600. So it's a pretty big difference. But in general, for AoE, you want to be going for elab elaborate planning anyway. Because the 10% more damage, you're going to have it up nearly all of the time if there's a lot of enemies so basically let me show you now we get the 10% buff you can see here and we use another finisher we have the 10% buff up, up again and we use another finisher we have the 10% buff up again so you see in AOE you can keep it up forever right now we I was energy starved but we'll go over that later like how you can prevent this the last talent there is is blindsight this is the most engaging talent because it's actually actually an extra button it can proc and it does execute damage, so below 30% you can always use this ability. This one is really fun. It could be fun to use if you like using extra buttons, and it's good if you need to execute the boss more. But in general, I would be going for elaborate planning for ease of use, plus good damage. <clears throat> the next trait we're gonna go over is Night Stalker Sutterfuge Master Assassin. Sutterfuge is the best by far uh, in all situations because you just, in general, it's just gonna give you more DPS. 
We also have Night Stalker, which is nice in open world content because you move 20% faster. But it's not really needed because if you have this talent, you can just get out multiple enemies and do a lot of damage. And you have Master Assassin. While stealth is active and for 3 seconds after breaking stealth, your critical chance is increased by 50%. This is very similar to Sutterfuge, but the difference here is that it doesn't give the damage to Garrot that Sutterfuge gives. So in, in general, Sutterfuge uh, is the best choice. But Master Assassin is actually also a good AoE choice. It, it kind of depends on which Azerite traits you have. So if you, do, if you don't have the correct Azerite Raids and Master Assassin could actually be useful. Then the next talent we're gonna go over, the t next talent we're gonna go over, you have Vigor, Deeper Stratagem, and Marked for Death. Vigor is just in general the best, like I said, good for pooling. Then you have Deeper Stratagem, which uh, just gives you instead of five combo points you have a maximum of six combo points which is good for uh, a lot of targets because if you do use your fan of knives it could be that you generate more than six combo points in one go so it's actually really good for aoe because you lose less combo points every time you aoe then you have mark for death which can be really handy on fights where there's ads that don't live very long because you just put it on an ad that's about to die <coughs> about to die and you basically get a free five combo point spender but of course it's more difficult to use than vigor by far so i recommend vigor for most people maybe for some fights you can go marked for death but that's up to you if you actually know how to use it and you're good at using it on low hp mobs and so on the next row is the leeching poison cheat death and elusiveness leeching poison is nice for world content because you can pull a bit more and you can heal some of the damage i wouldn't use a mythic use the mythic plus I tried it before but it just doesn't give enough healing to be better than cheat death or elusiveness. Cheat, cheat death is amazing on bosses that do a lot of damage or just mythic plus where stuff can one shot you because you basically have two lives so it kind of speaks for itself. The next one is elusiveness. It's basically it just gives you a 30% damage reduction uh, whenever you have faint and faint only has a 15 second cooldown so you basically have a very strong on-demand damage reduction that you can use nearly all the time. Then the next one uh, next then the next row is internal bleeding, iron wire, and prey on the weak. Uh, iron wire could be used for PvP, but I don't really PvP, so correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah, basically, it just increases the silence effect from Garrot by 3 seconds, and the enemies that have Garrot on them deal 15% uh, reduced damage for 8 seconds, which is definitely <laughs> definitely good for PvP. Then you have internal bleeding. When you kidney shot, you do bleed damage, just like if it was a spender that does damage. But the damage is not super high. Then you have Prey on the Weak, which gives everyone 10% more damage. Which is definitely the better choice. Because in group content, if you do 10%, if everyone does 10% more damage against one target, you're gonna gain way more damage from it than internal bleeding. The next town throw is Venom Rush, Toxic Blade, Ex Exsanguinate. Venom Rush basically gives you 5 energy when you use Mutilate against the poison target, which is nice. But if you fight more than one enemy, it gets kind of pushed behind because when you dot something with rupture you actually gain energy back so once there's more than one target this actually loses all of it effect its effect its effectiveness also then we have toxic blade which is the recommended choice do you have a lot of poison effects you have poison bomb you have envenom they all do poison damage so doing 30 percent more poison damage against the target is very nice especially during burst because if you have heroism plus you use this ability plus all your poison abilities it's going to do good damage then we have X Sanguinate, which is even higher burst than Toxic Blade, and it helps with energy regeneration. This is useful if there's adds that need to die quickly, because you can burst them down really quick with, the, with this ability. But in general, I would be going for Toxic Blade most of the time. The next row, Poison Bomb, is the single target option, because the other ones are just not great in single target. But in AoE, you can use Hidden Blades. It's not super effective because on, on most AoE situations, you want to be using your shuriken store more than once. So after you use it the first time, the damage uh, potential or the extra damage is just lost. Then you have Crimson Tempest, which can be used in Mythic Plus on big AoE packs. I tried it before, but in general, I prefer Poison Bomb just because if Poison Bomb procs on a lot of enemies, it actually does a lot of damage. Plus, it actually gains value on single target. Also, Crimson Tempest does not gain the value from a passive we're going to talk about very soon. Actually, we're going to talk about that passive now, after I show you how much damage Fan of Knives does. So, it gets to 20 stacks. It's everything for 8k to 16k, depends if, if it crits or not. So it's good for burst, but in general it's worse than the other two towns. Let's go over the passives now, which are very important to what I'm about to, uh, to what I'm gonna explain later. You have 
fleet footed which is not very special just movement speed then your mastery this one when you critically strike with a melee attack that generates a combo point you gain an additional combo point per critical strike so what this does is on aoe your fan of knives will actually generate more than one combo point if it crits you see i generated five here generated one because none of them crit none of my fan of knives hits crit i use it again one crit uh so i get three combo points one crit no crit uh, two crits, one crit, one crit, and so on and so on. And then you have Venomous Wounds. You, re you regain 7 energy each time your Garrot or Rupture deals bleed damage to a poisoned target. If an enemy dies while afflicted by your Rupture, you gain energy based on its remaining duration. This is really nice because what this does is, well, like I showed you on AoE, I was energy starved, so if you just dot everything... Let's just use some low duration ruptures just for the example you can see we're generating faster and faster we actually don't have a problem in aoe we can literally just spam our fan of knives and we don't have a single problem because we we generate enough energy now but anyway that was it for the talents now let's go over the azerite traits so now we're gonna over, go over the azerite traits the most important one or the strongest one is called shrouded suffocation it makes your garret deal uh it makes your garret deal extra damage and you generate two additional combo points. Uh, this is if you do it from stealth, obviously. Well, not obviously, but yeah, this is this happens if you use it from stealth. This is a very strong talent because on burst, it's nice because you gain two additional combo points, which means you can put up a longer rupture, which means you can spend more combo points on Envenom. But also the fact that we have this one trait, with this one talent, which lets us use Garrett for three seconds uh, after we go out of Invis with no cooldown, Plus it does 80% more damage. Uh, the way this works is it counts the extra damage to the Garrot and then it multiplies it by 1.8. Which means that you have extremely strong Garrots when you use it from stealth. Now after that we have Sharpened Blade which, which is a shuriken throw trait. You shouldn't go for this trait. Well you should. But you shouldn't go for this trait if you only have one of them. As you can see if you have one of these traits it's actually one of the worst traits. But once you have more of these traits it becomes very strong. The main reason for this is because you need to use energy plus a global cooldown to use this. So if you only have one of these traits, the damage might not be worth it as much. But once you have two of these traits, you can do very, very high damage with these Sharn Blades. Of course, even though it says it's one of the worst traits if you only have one of them, it can be very strong, especially in fights where you're out of range for a second and you have 30 stacks, you can just throw one of your Sharpened Blades and you, you will actually gain DPS. After that, it's double dose. When Mutilate applies le lethal poison with both daggers, it's poison the target for an, an additional 500 damage. Basically, if you just use your generator on a poison target and you would apply poison again, you just do some extra damage, which is nice for single target. It's not a bad as you can see but it is a very strong option if you do not have shroud suffocation so if you have the option to pick double dose you should pick it because as you can see if you only have one trait of it it's actually the second best trait then you have thunderous blast which is just which is not spe spec specific laser matrix which you only get from from odir dagger in the black blah 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 these are all generic traits uh, you should go to bloodmallet.com if you have traits to see if they're actually useful for you but yeah the main ones you want to go for is shrouded suffocation double dose and then sharpen blades. Now I'm going to show you why shrouded suffocation is so strong. So I have three of these pieces. You should try to get three as well because it's very strong in AOE, but I'll show you in a second why this is. So I have three of these pieces. <clears throat> if I apply a normal Garrett, let's see for how much it takes. 1,150. 1,150. Okay, let's let's uh, let it tick until it ends and then let's show, I'll show you how much it ticks for once you're in stealth with three of these traits. Because right now it doesn't look like the trait is that good. Okay, we're in stealth. Let's use Garrett. 5,100. 10,000 crit. 5,100. You see how strong this is? It's, it's ticking for five times or four times as much as it was before just because of having these traits. Now on single target, it's already extremely good for dps but once we go aoe it's even stronger because Sutterfuge allows us to use it for three seconds after we go out of stealth so if you're fast enough you can t uh you can do it on multiple enemies which means it is very good for mythic plus because you can get out multiple enemies so let's go invisible now i'm gonna show you how you can use it on aoe because you can actually for three seconds use the garret for free after you go out of stealth so one two three four it's ticking for 5k on all of them 5k 5k 10k crit 
See, I'm look at look. I'm doing 19k, 20k DPS, 21k, 23k, 24, 26k DPS. I'm doing nothing. I'm 30k DPS, 32k DPS on these targets, and I wasn't doing anything. I'm not even sure if it's correct, but okay, okay. It's because it keeps resetting, but because I'm not attacking. But you, you get the idea. If you have the dot sticking on four enemies for 5k per tick, that's insane. That's insane damage. So the way you want to use this as well in raids, for example, is. If you on pull do all your damage, then normally you would vanish just to reapply a strong Garrett. But in this situation, uh, if there's going to be adds on the fight, for example, let's see which fight. Um, on Mithrax, for example, in the second phase, there's going to be uh, small ad spawning and there's multiple of them. So you can just get it like four, like three or four of them. You can actually get it with the strong Garrett, which means it's going to do very very high dps just if you save your vanish of course you need to know when to save and when not to save it but if you know how to use this properly then it can be extremely strong oh wow i actually equipped the wrong piece garrett does even more damage than 5000 yeah i was wondering like my garrett normally takes harder let's see how much it takes for now 6000 look at the damage okay I, th I think there's something bugged right now yeah i i had this a second ago as well let's try it again 6,000? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 6,600. So now it's gonna crit for uh, 13,260. That's insane. I got one extra Garrett trait and it's doing a lot more damage. Like, that's insane. If you have done four targets, that's just stupid damage. It's really stupid damage. Okay, so now I'm going to be showing you the opener for Assassination Rogue. The Assassination Rogue opener is very strong, especially if you get some lucky crits. But basically, how you wanna open is you wanna Garrett first, which uh, you wanna go stealth, obviously. Then you want a Garrett. It uh, doesn't matter if you have Distant or Distant. Garrett is going to deal either 50% more damage or it's going to deal 80% more damage uh, depending on the trait you have. Then you use Mutilate uh, to generate combo points. Then you cast Rupture because you should have it up at all times. Then you cast Vendetta which is your main cooldown which makes you do 30% more damage to the target for 20 seconds, which is really great for Burst. Then you cast Mutilate to generate more combo points. Then you cast Toxic Blade to do more nature damage for 9 seconds to the target. Also, one note is it awards one combo point, and of course it awards two combo points if you have a crit. And then you cast Vanish, because if you're Night Stalker, your next ability will deal 50% more damage. Or if you have Subterfuge, your Garrett will deal 80% more damage and can be used for 3 seconds after breaking stealth. After the Vanish, you cast Envenom, uh, then you cast Mutilate, then you cast Garrett, which if you have this talent, will still activate, because this should all happen within the 3 second window. Then you cast and Venom again, and then you're done with your burst. Then you do the normal priority, which I'm gonna explain to you after this. Okay, so let's say this is a normal pool. We use Carrot, Mutilate, Rupture, Vendetta, Mutilate, Toxic Blade, Vanish, and Venom, Mutilate, Garrett, and Venom. See, 30k, 30k burst damage. And uh, also, you can see our Garrett is actually doing 30% of our damage, which is just insane. That's just because of these character traits. Without the character traits, it's still gonna do a lot of damage, but just not, a, not as much as a, uh, you would with these traits. So now I'm going to show you the normal rotation. Let's just st uh, start attacking the mob. What you wanna do is you wanna always keep Garrett up, always wanna keep Rupture up, and then you just use your Mutilate to generate combo points, and then use your Envenom to spend the combo points. Envenom applies a buff to you, which makes you, um, it gives you 30% more chance to apply poison. When you apply a poison to a target that already has a poison on it, it's just gonna deal some uh, some plain damage. So let's start the rotation, let's keep our dots up. You can use Envenom if you're at 4 or 5 combo points. If you are on 4 combo points and you use Mutilate, you have a chance you're gonna waste a combo point. Because it gives you 2 combo points and if it crits it gives you 3 combo points. So that's why you use it on 4 or 5. Also the same with Rupture. Rupture is not going to deal less damage if you don't refresh it. If you don't refresh it at 5 points, it's just not going to last as long. But you don't want to be wasting combo points, so you do it at 4 or 5 combo points. <clears throat> so let's do a DPS rotation again. Keep Rupture up. You always keep Toxic Blade on cooldown. You can play around Toxic Blade a little bit because you know with Toxic Blade that you're going to do more nature damage. 30% more nature damage. So if you want, what you can do with Toxic Blade is you can try to pull some energy and combo points just before you activate Toxic Blade. For Assassination Rogue, there's a lot of situations where you should know where to pull 
and where not to pull. Pool, what pooling actually means, uh, for the people that don't know what it is, it's you just do nothing to just get some energy. The important part is that if you pool, you make sure your dots don't fall off. If, you've, if your dots fall off, then you're not pooling correctly. You need to make sure when you pool, your dots don't fall off and you just, you're just you saving something to actually, actually do more damage. So let's set up a situation here. Let's say Toxic Blade is on cooldown. Okay, let's just let it go on cooldown a bit. Let's just go on low energy. Let's just spam even though we're at five combo points. So let's see. We're 14, we have 14 seconds to prepare for this once it comes back because we then do more nature damage and Venom does nature damage. So let's see. What we want to do is we want to see if we can get on five combo points as high mu as much energy as we have. We're dropping dots here, but that's fine. Okay, so we use in Venom. This... So see, I'm using as many Envenoms as I can within the window. Now I'm waiting because I'm not getting enough energy. And now I use it just before it ends. Just so I can get the last hit in with the actual buff. Plus the fact that Envenom gives this buff. And I don't want to overwrite it completely. So if I, because I waited a bit longer, I got more value out of my Envenom buff. Because uh, I refreshed it later. Plus, I actually still got the extra damage from having Toxic Blade on the enemy. So there's a lot of situations you basically just have to learn them. But the main idea is that... If you use Toxic Blade, you want to uh, get as much in Toxic Blade as you can. It's not super, super important, but if you want to optimize, like for example, now I'm waiting because I'm refreshing it at the last second, plus it's still on the buff. If you are just doing a normal DPS rotation and you don't even have Toxic Blade up, then for example, right now, I, I could use Envenom, but the buff still has three seconds left. So why would I? The better choice here is to just wait until it's about to end or until it just ends and then use Envenom again. Of course, if I'm gonna cap on energy or if I'm gonna let the dots drop, then of course I need to change what I do. But basically, that's the idea, like, if you want to optimize DPS. If you don't want to optimize DPS, then it doesn't really matter. But if you want to optimize DPS, which is probably why you're watching this guide, like now, use now Envenom just at the end, then it's a good thing to know that you just want to... That you just want to pool energy and pool resources just for the perfect moment. Now I'm going to show you AoE damage. Because of our passive, where we generate uh, venomous wounds, because of our passive, we generate energy for every uh, rupture or garret we have on an enemy that also has poison. So on AoE, you kind of want to have rupture on three targets, because if you have rupture on three targets, that means that you will generate enough energy to just spam your fan of knives. Also, you want to be using the rest of your combo points on Envenom, because and Venom gives you a 30% extra chance to apply poison and the fact is if you apply poison on a target that already has poison then you will actually deal some damage so if you can keep this buff up in AoE plus rupture then you will actually do the most damage so um, let me show you the rotation I'm sorry if everything is a bit confusing but for assassination rogue it is a simple spec but a lot, a lot of thought goes into what you're doing if you actually want to optimize everything so I, ho I hope you aren't too confused and you actually understand the basic idea so let's say there's a pack of four mobs uh, we're going to open up with carrot on four different so i'm going to show you the aoe rotation now first of all you want to be opening with carrot on all the enemies um you can apply to about four enemies uh, in the three second window unless you have like way more haste than me uh, after that you want to be applying you want to be doing your fan of knives and you want to be applying rupture to multiple enemies and after you have all that set up you can basically just spam in venom and fan of knives so let's open up here carrot carrot Garrett, Garrett, Rapture, Fan of Knives. See, we're not generating enough energy yet. Rapture. Now we're actually getting a lot of energy. We want to also refresh our Garrett. So now we use Envenom. Also, I'm not using my uh, Toxic Blade here, mainly because uh, it's just an example. It's... Um, and Toxic Blade is kind of a cooldown. But yeah, you basically want to be targeting the strongest enemy usually, and you want to be using Toxic Blade on him. And also Vendetta on him. Vendetta has only a 2 minute cooldown, so in Mythic Plus, it doesn't matter if you uh, use it on Trash. You should try to use it as much as you can. So you can see our AoE damage is not too bad, actually. Uh, a very important note right now is, if you're about to vanish to apply uh, Garrett to multiple targets, Wait, I'm gonna energy starve myself here a second. Jesus Christ. Okay, so now I'm energy starved. Now, if you want to vanish and apply Garrett to as many enemies as you can because of your traits, your Azrite traits, 
you want to make sure you actually have enough energy. If I vanish now, I'm not going to be able to apply uh, Garrett to multiple targets. So if you want to apply it, make sure you pull some energy like now. Now we go invisible and we can apply the Garrett. But you see, I only managed to apply to three targets because I didn't have enough energy. So it's very important to note that before you do it, before you vanish, you actually have enough energy. Because if you don't have enough energy to do it, you're going to hate yourself. Also, a very important part is if you get it and then you vanish, your cooldown is not going to reset. So if you get it and then you go, you do vanish, you're just going to screw yourself over because you need to wait six seconds before you can actually get it again. So that was the AoE rotation. I, I think I covered all the special situations with pooling and the reasons you want to pool. The general rotation, again, I'm just going to repeat it, is you keep Garrett up, you keep Rupture up, you do Toxic Blade on cooldown, Vendetta. On four or five combo points, you use um, your and Venom, and you just keep your dots up. That is the basic rotation. But I went a bit in depth because if you're watching this guide, you probably want to know how to do the best DPS possible. So. Um, I'm gonna stop the video here if you have any questions about this because I feel like I was rambling on on and on a bit about everything If you have any questions about it, just leave me a question in the comments and I definitely am gonna respond I read all my comments So just leave the question drop the question below and I'm gonna try to get back to you as fast as possible Anyway, thanks for watching the video subscribe if you like the video and if you want to see more of these guides I'm going to be making more most likely so Definitely stay tuned for those. Uh, so anyway, yeah, subscribe, like the video if you liked it, comment if you have any questions, and I'm gonna see you guys later. Thanks for watching.